Hello, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, the board all, all met in executive session to discuss a collective bargaining agreement. So we've pledged our allegiances and uh, we have taken roll call. Uh, so let's move on to the approval of the agenda. Ms. Shields? Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the agenda as written. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Great. The next meeting of the Haldane Board of Education is scheduled for Tuesday, October 18th, 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Uh, that will be a workshop meeting, the topic being the campus master plan, the next iteration of that. Um, we've got a pretty full agenda this evening, so I'm going to just go ahead and give it over to you. Superintendent uh, just a few remarks before we transition to a conversation around uh, garrison uh, tuition rates. I, I wanted to mention, as the board's aware, on Saturday, a visiting student athlete suffered uh, what at the time we thought was a very serious injury, which required a significant response on the part of our athletic trainer, Matt Crow, and athletic director, Mr. John Bauerlein. Uh, the student athlete was transported via helicopter. We actually had to helivac the student. Uh, the EMS had to met the uh, student from uh, here to Westchester Medical Center. Uh, and we're all pleased to hear, though, that the student appears to have avoided serious injury. Uh, and I want to thank and publicly acknowledge Ms. Crow and Mr. Bauerlein for their actions on the field, as well as the student athletes and parents and additional sort support staff who were on site that allowed for our emergency responders uh, to come into the facility and uh, work in a, uh, and support the student, uh, his family, in a safe but uh, expeditious manner. So um, yeah, it was quite, uh, I think many were very worried for a period of time there, but i um, happy to say the student athletes uh, seems to be recovering just fine. Uh, this is homecoming week. So it's uh, culminating with our Athletic Hall of Fame induction on Sunday. I just wanted to wish our student athletes good luck who are competing this week. And as the fall season begins to come to a close, it's a very exciting time on campus. As our board members uh, may have noted, The Current is running a feature on children's mental health and well-being and the impact of the pandemic under uh, mental health over the last several years. And uh, um, a few of our practitioners were interviewed for the series. I wanna thank them. And it's uh, a focus on this week's report was on the use of federal aid to expand mental health services and supports in schools. As you may recall, we didn't receive a lot of federal aid, uh, just given our size and um, also some other variables that were factored into that. Uh, what aid we did receive, we directed towards academic support for students through the interventionist. Uh, that being said, we still directed a lot of time and energy into supporting the mental well-being of our students over the last uh, couple of years, and we'll continue to do so, as I shared with uh, the current. Uh, that's being supported through our local and state funding, more so than the federal funding uh, that we received. And we look forward to seeing uh, the future reports as part of that series over the next two weeks. The school climate results were shared with the community today. So those should be in your inbox. So receive those. And uh, yeah, those, that concludes my announcements. It's been, continues to be a very busy school year. Uh, I do wanna transition to a discussion regarding the garrison tuition. And I have some slides to share that Megan's going to pull up. Prior to that though, I wanna welcome uh, Kent Schacht uh, from the garrison Union Free School District. Uh, Ken uh, is an active uh, board member uh, at Garrison, also serves on their finance committee, if I have that right, Ken. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm going to ask Kent to start just because Ken can provide some perspective just from the, the Garrison end of this on uh, some of the factors that contributed to their your budget development or Garrison's budget development last school year. And then I will transition to sharing some of the terms of the current instructional contract and uh, Peggy and Sean and I can then facilitate a discussion around the conversation we had with other representatives from Garrison uh, just two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So Ken, if you wouldn't mind, and then I'm just gonna circle in right behind you, Ken. So thank you all for having me this evening. You know, on behalf of the Garrison Board, I wanna say how much we re really appreciate this relationship between our two schools and our two communities, which really make up one community, obviously, Phillipstown. During the recent renovation at Garrison last year, we 
found some documents. I don't know if they're in a wall or somewhere, but they uh, they made us reminded us that the first ever graduating class of Garrison Union Free School attended Haldane High School, and we've been doing it proudly for over a century since. So, kids from Garrison grow up in Cold Spring, grow up together in Phillipstown. They participate in activities together from Phillipstown Little League, Depot Theater, Phillipstown Soccer Club, Garrison Arts Center, among many. Cold Spring athletes wear Garrison across their chest when they play modified soccer, and Garrison kids proudly wear Haldane across their chest playing modified baseball, softball, and football. These teams, which sometimes dub themselves the Blue Cougars, a nod to the mascots, are a symbol of the tight bonds that make our community really special. It's a relationship that everyone in Garrison really wants to continue, and nobody more than me. After attending Guffs for nine years, I have a daughter who's a freshman here at Haldane this year, and she's having a terrific experience. My other two children, both of whom are in middle school, should they get the opportunity, could enter the halls of Haldane in a few years and be encircled by a full, a full community of friends, thanks to the strong bonds that they've made as part of growing up in Phillipstown. All of that said, the reason I'm here tonight is that Garrison faces some pretty big challenges financially, both in 2022 and in the near future. As you know, this isn't a new issue for us. We had to ask our community for help last spring to fund our 2022-23 budget and prevent massive, tax, massive cuts with the tax override. Although our voters rejected our initial request for 9.9% override, they came through in the second vote and gave us a 6.6% override. It took a huge effort on behalf of our entire school community to find a number that could win that second vote, including a pay freeze from our teachers and administrators and some difficult cuts made to programming. Obviously, Haldane also came through. We really appreciate that by extending the four-year offer contract for all students currently enrolled at the same rate as we pay our other high school partner. This was really appreciated by our community and a great symbol of our longtime partnership and friendship. Although the final outcome of the override was successful, the process was gut-wrenching for our school community and our teachers and students especially. Because we had to publicly share what cuts would have to be made if the second override didn't pass and a contingency budget was adopted, we had many longtime staff and teachers and teachers who were told they would lose their jobs if the vote didn't pass. As a result, we had some talented staff leave our school due to this uncertainty, and fortunately made a number of our valued and loved teachers and administrators have to suffer through a month of uncertainty whether they'd have a job this year. To put it bluntly, there will be no interest in Garrison in going out for another override anytime soon, nor does anyone think it would be successful. So with that in mind, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. Yes, Garrison's overall tax rate is lower than Haldane's. I completely understand the perspective of the community here that thinks that's unfair. The reality is that the tax rate is not something that can be changed with one vote, or even if we had a vote every year for a decade. Another thing I've heard from some people in Phillipstown is that we should merge our districts. And while that's certainly a compelling thing to discuss, it's not something that's likely to ever ha or happen anytime soon, if ever. Topics like our tax rate or merging districts are theoretical discussions, and unfortunately, they have no bearing to what we're trying to solve right now. So we at the Garrison Board are focused on the challenges of today's budget. It consumes every discussion we have and every decision we make. Our tax base overall is really small. We're only a $10 million budget. So every dollar we put into our budget counts and every unexpected expense is really challenging. We're currently faced with a number of those challenges. We actually received a decrease in state aid and BOCES aid last year. We aren't counting on that reversing really anytime soon. Our healthcare costs increased 8% last year. Our transportation expenses are nearly double now what they were pre-pandemic. We've had to draw down our fund balance pretty significantly to help pay for the necessities that happened during the pandemic and also just to pay off some of these increase in costs. So budgeting choices we have had to and will continue to have to make for our K through eight students reflect this reality. We are running a really tight ship. We only have one section per K through eight class, with the exception of a gigantic kindergarten class this year, which is great, but certainly not uh, possible to do a 32 kid kindergarten class. And uh, our substantial eighth grade class that also has different math cohorts. So as a result, our elementary and middle school class sizes are about 20% higher on average than they are here in this building. Our administration has also been very creative in finding different ways to maintain our educational experience. We employ artists in residence um, for our arts and music curriculum, which has been wildly successful. And they've also done a great job of consolidating many of the responsibilities on an administrative level to save the need for additional staff heads. But despite all this great expense management, we're still in a very difficult position and will be so for the near future. 
specifically for the reason I'm standing before you tonight. In addition to all these costs, we're going to see a huge increase in future years in the cost of our high school tuition, no matter what rate we're paying, due to a growing size of our high school age student population. We anticipate that we'll have nearly 90 high school students in the Garrison District by the 2024-25 school year. That's an increase of 23% from what it was last year. This coming challenge is why we've made it a priority to create arrangements and agreements with our high school partners and lock in long-term rates. We simply can't afford to have high school tuition be an unpredictable line item in our budget as we add more and more students in coming years. Not having a locked in rate or negotiating uh, agreements annually, just not sustainable for our school from a budget point of view. And that's why we're asking Haldane to agree to the same terms as our other high school partner. I hope I've made it clear why going year to year for Garrison is impossible for us planning on such small margins and unpredictable budget factors. But really, for me, the more important reason to come to a deal is for our parents and students. Garrison's a unique place. It's one of the few that offers high school choice. It's a key characteristic to the educational experience for our students and something we plan to continue to offer. It'll be really hard for us to do so with Haldane unless we know our future fixed costs and know we can afford that partnership. We owe it to our community and our students to put in place a long-term deal take this question off the table and create security for our students who are currently considering their choices. I do want to address the NRT, non-resident tuition rate. So I've made clear we need a rate that's locked in for a number of years that meets our budgetary needs. And that means accepting a non-resident tuition rate formula is really challenging for us. First, the NRT rate isn't something we know in advance. In fact, it comes in halfway through the following year after students are already attending classes. For example, if Garrison students were paying hardly in the NRT rate this year, we wouldn't know what that rate is until this coming January, when we need to budget 10 months, 10 months earlier. On the extremely tight budget in the small district we had, we simply are unable to manage this way. Second, NRT is a reflection of spending on students and state aid awarded, not necessarily the incremental cost of each student. We're familiar with this concept in Garrison, as we, for the first time in years, started accepting non-resident students this year. We don't charge nearly the full NRT rate because we recognize the economies of scale make the tuition that we do accept for out-of-district students a great value for our district and our community. From that pr perspective, we believe the that the incremental addition of 60 or so Garrison students to the Haldane High School population and the tuition that it brings, even at a negotiated rate, is a very positive thing financially for Haldane. I don't think anyone would dispute that, especially as our high school population continues to swell through the middle part of this decade. Financial issues aside, Garrison students are much more than line items in a budget. They're an important part of this community. Garrison student population hauled in not only adds to the school's academics, athletics, and arts uh, excellence, but also allows the school to offer programs that may not be possible without the addition of 60 to 70 students to the high school population. Raising your overall student population definitely lifts the hauled in experience. So at the end of the day, what's most important to me and the rest of the Garrison board is the experience of our kids. And clearly, we believe that keeping them at Haldane and codifying our relationship for years to come is the best thing we can do, not only for Garrison students, but for Haldane students as well. Garrison kids attending Haldane is good for everybody. It's good for Garrison, it's good for Haldane, and, it, and it's good for Phillipstown. It keeps our community bond strong. That said, whether or not we come to an agreement with Haldane, we are committed to offering high school choice. We have other potential new partners that have committed to offering the terms that meet our budgetary challenges. Myself and the Garrison Board are asking Haldane to make a similar agreement to extend our partnership on terms we firmly believe are beneficial to us both. Thank you again for the opportunity to come and speak with you and share our perspective from Garrison. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you so much for coming. I, Bill, if you want to come back up. Yeah, so Ken, if you want to mind staying, I'm just going to present sure. some constructs for our yeah. contract, contract, and uh, we'll go from there. So as Ken had shared, um, uh, last year's budget situation uh, with Garrison was somewhat uh, unanticipated, and I don't, Sorry. I don't, <laughs> there you are, <laughs> uh, somewhat unanticipated, and it, it created this uh, dynamic where we were discussing tuition rates during our budget development process as well. And as we agreed to, uh, we established parameters for a locked in tuition rate for the current cohort of students who are here. Hey, Megan, I don't have the clicker. Would you mind? Oh, you're going to click for me. Thank you so much. So I just want to provide some background information on the current agreement that we have, which exists for students who are currently in ninth through 12th grade here at Haldane. 
Uh, before I get into this, I'd be remiss if I, I, I didn't circle back to a couple of things that Ken had shared, which was one for the, to reiterate the value for the relationship that we have uh, with our garrison students now. We consider them Haldane students uh, and their families. Uh, that's something that's very important to us and something we've come to appreciate uh, not only recently, but it sounds like for probably 100 years or so. Uh, second, uh, Peggy, Sean, and I met with the garrison leadership a couple of uh, weeks ago. And it really stemmed from a discussion that uh, Mr. Albano and I had, which was to try to address this matter sooner so it didn't carry into budget development process. That's good for garrison, that's good for Haldane, seems to be good for all. As Ken had shared, these are students that we're talking about and families, and we wanna make sure that we're providing uh, some sense of certainty for what is in place uh, for the upcoming school year, uh, not just from a budgeting uh, perspective, but for uh, the students who are impacted by this or potentially impacted by it. So uh, with that in mind, uh, and we did state that we would try to arrive at any, uh, try to bring this to closure by the end of this month if we could. We have a meeting tonight, we have another meeting next week, uh, and that would be offer plenty of time for the board to discuss this matter. Uh, Garrison's ask, if you will, is to basically continue the agreement that we have in place right now uh, for students in, in successive years. So eighth grade students that are at Garrison now, and for whatever duration uh, Haldane is, uh, comfortable with for uh, groups that may come uh, behind that group of students. So uh, we currently charge uh, the tuition for this school year is set at $16,495. Uh, as Ken alluded to, this is the rate, uh, the lower of the two NRT rates uh, between us and O'Neill High School. Uh, in subsequent years under our current agreement, tuition will increase by either the CPI or 2%, whichever is less. Uh, for the time being, uh, this is likely to be 2%, uh, and that's for students who are entering grade nine um, uh, this school year. Uh, or for students who are grading, entering grade nine, we have to renegotiate uh, the terms and conditions of this, whether it be an extension of this agreement or something else. Uh, Garrison agrees to pay for any additional tuition, uh, related service expenses, and all other costs for students who are placed in out-of-district programs by the Committee of Special Education. In our previous agreement, we had a tiered structure for special education costs. Uh, that was determined by the extent of the programmatic needs that were listed for each student. Uh, we shifted that to charging uh, uh, the same tuition rate for general education students uh, unless special education students are placed in out-of-district programs. Garrison assumes the cost for those students, as well as, again, as the related service expenses that, are, that, may be, uh, that those students may receive. Megan, if you can transition to the next slide. This is the, an overview of the non-resident tuition rate structure. As Ken alluded to, we don't know the non-resident tuition rate for this school year. We won't know that for a few months' time. You can also see uh, the NRT rate against what Haldane actually charged Garrison. We went back to 1617 for purposes of tonight's conversation. We felt this offered enough perspective. Uh, in years prior to 1617, it hovered right around that $13,000 mark. And you can see uh, in any given year, the rate can jump quite significantly. So if you look from 1819 to 1920, the NRT rate jumped about $2,500 per student. We also saw a significant increase from 2021 to 2122, uh, going from 186 to 20,400. Now, uh, this is co uh, compounded to a degree. If you look at what the actual rate was that we were charging Garrison at those times, uh, this is what Garrison would have been alluding to uh, as a significant fiscal stress that they were assuming as they were planning for this school year as it relates to what they had been paying in 2021 to what potentially we were moving towards in the NRT rate uh, north of $20,000. And again, uh, the negotiated rate for this year is listed there at $16,495. This is just a different visual of the same information. The NRT rate is the dark blue bar. The actual rate that we negotiated with Garrison is the light blue bar. We decided just for purposes of discussion tonight to demonstrate what the NRT rate is in other districts. 
Uh, caveat here, these districts may not even have policy that allows uh, for non-resident students to attend their schools. I didn't look that up. That would be dictated by board policy. Uh, but it just gives you some, some perspective on districts that we consider similar in size and how those NRT rates can vary. Also, how they have varied over years uh, in any given district, sometimes taking perceived more significant jumps than other years, uh, which is all determined by a uh, formula, uh, an SED formula that's established. So you can see with respect to Haldane's rate, we're higher than some districts, we're lower than others. This is an overview of our current enrollment, 22-23 uh, being the current school year at the top uh, row there. We currently have 53 garrison students attending our school this year. Uh, you can get a sense here in the previous school years how that has ranged, not only uh, by class, but also by total cohort. Uh, generally, we enjoy having more garrison students here this year than we have in the previous five school years. Looking ahead, uh, just uh, against the current, current contract that's in place, these are the students who are under the terms and conditions, who are attending Haldane under the terms and conditions of the current agreement, and, and then how, how this could potentially shift over in each successive year of the agreement. So it's our current 9 through 12 cohort, and how that enrollment group is uh, shifting in terms of size in the, uh, next, uh, over the next three school years. Got a couple of questions just in anticipation of tonight's conversation and again, some caveats to these uh, questions. So, and then we'll turn it over to the board for further discussion. And if you have any questions for Kent, I know Kent would be happy to answer uh, some questions as well. So how much does it cost to educate a student in Haldane? So uh, it's a bit of a loaded question and that I'll say there's different ways to look at this. Uh, that being said, if you were to look at the methodology under the Every Student Succeeds Act, so if you were to go to our school report card, uh, there is an actual per pupil cost that is generated, uh, that SED generates for our, our school district. Uh, and the formula or the variables that they're looking at in our district budget and how they arrive at a per pupil cost uh, is all listed there. Uh, so if you were to look at their methodology, our cost per student is $26,900 in the 2021 school year. I'm sorry, there's a bit of a typo there. There's always a lag in that SED data. So this is the most current data you can look that method whose methodology is the same across all districts in New York State. So if you were interested in saying, well, how does Haldane calculate or how, what's Haldane's cost versus any other school district's cost, you can refer to the state ed uh, website, the school report cards, and they'll give you these costs. Um, that's not to say, though, that our NRT rate matches these costs. If we were to go back a few slides, you would see in the 2020-2021 school year, our, our NRT rate was less than $26,902. Uh, $26, but uh, if you wanted to compare districts, you could do so. I'll just note the county average was $28,000 per student. So uh, this is a reference point I've made in some of our budget development uh, processes. And uh, usually in comparison to other county schools. So here we have it again, again just for a point of reference. Next slide, Mike. Who provides transportation for garrison students who attend Haldane? Garrison still assumes the costs uh, and responsibilities associated with transportation for our students. And can other out of district students attend Haldane? And if so, at what cost? So we actually have policy that relates to this. It's policy 7132. The answer is yes, other out of district students can attend Haldane with the approval of the Board of Education. We've been in a, a couple of times over the years where we've had a parent uh, petition the district to allow their child to attend Haldane for a variety of reasons. We review those matters with the board uh, and uh, generally uh, over the past couple of years, uh, I can only speak to, uh, we have allowed those students to attend. They do pay the full non-resident tuition rate. As opposed to, so that would be different than the one that the garrison students are under in the current Correct. contract. Correct. Uh, it's the rate, the last rate the that last we have is $20,400 or so uh, for this school year. So those were a few questions that I had uh, received prior. So those are for the board. Uh, and we can open up for further discussion and questions. I'm just going to take my seat so you have a microphone to yourself, Ken. Thank you. Thank you again for coming, and I was 
quite generous, I think, of the board officers from the Garrison Union to uh, send you over here. They said that you would do a wonderful uh, job. They volunteered. I've, I've they volunteered been here a few times them. before, yeah. so yeah, exactly. I, I kind of so, knew where I was going. So, so thank you so very much for doing it, and for, I think, accurately uh, representing, you know, what we, what our takeaway from that conversation was. So thank you for your time and for so generously speaking about your own personal experience here with your family in the district. Um, Peggy and I had the opportunity to ask some questions. So before I launch, and I, I, I'd like to turn it over to the members of the board who weren't in that small meeting. If you have any questions, and I'm sure sure that you do. Uh, looks like John, I see that. I see. I'll, I'll, I'll toss it in. Okay. Um, thank you for coming and being the point of the sword for like uh, things that we're going to ask you. Um, a, First, uh, uh, like having garrison students attend Halloween is fantastic, right? I, I fully believe the community um, aspect of all of us participating in, whether it's Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or Phil's Town, right? Absolutely great. I also recognize your interest, your really strong interest in budget security, budget consistency over time. Totally get that. Um, one of the benefits of attending Garrison, as you mentioned, and one of the ones that you want to be able to continue is to provide school choice, which is great. Um, a question that I have is, I understand that you're looking to all of your potential high school partners for um, consistency and budget consistency based on the number of students you have. I guess my question is, um, and so we would be guaranteeing that to you, right, through some sort of... Again, What's the reciprocal guarantee from Garrison? Our guarantee would continue to offer Haldane as a choice. So that's interesting because it ends up being a choice, right? So we saw those numbers of students that come to Haldane, and as much as we don't like to talk about dollars per kid, it's dollars per kid. And while we would be guaranteeing you consistency of t your tuition into the future, we wouldn't be guaranteed any tuition. We could have a year when every single student chooses to go to O'Neill or Lakeland or pick your school. So we are similarly facing a, a challenge of a budget gap in a year where we may not reap the benefits of the students deciding to come to. So is there, what's the trade, I guess is? I guess we're not, we're not going to commit to exclusive to one school, so right. I'm not able to offer you a guaranteed number of students per year. Yeah. Um, I can continue to offer you the, the ability for our students to come here. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about in the past, if you guys have ideas about if you want to figure out ways in which to balance out the budgeting each year and have a merged average change the way that we pay each other or that we pay our tuition rather than on an annual basis, I'm sure we'd be certainly open to talking about that. Um, but for right now, we're not going to change our, our high school choice program right. and have an exclusive with one school. Yeah, and I don't think it's even about exclusivity. It's about we're sacrificing guaranteed revenue for your guaranteed cost. And that's and we don't even have guaranteed revenue yeah. at this point. We just like, we right. have dedicated uh, ourselves to making our students make that choice earlier in the year yeah. before the budgeting process happens. In the past, they would choose in March after the budgeting process when it was yeah. truly just... Uh, an unknown what you would get. Right. So we are doing that. We are making them make that choice by the end of the year. So you will know for a budgeting point of view what you'll be getting each year. Yeah, that's, that's certainly beneficial. Second question I had was on the um, the CP, the lower of the CPI or the 2%. or two percent. What's the average budget to budget increase for Garrison? It's it's in the two to three percent range of the tax cap. Okay. So all right. So that's fair. So. If it's lower and will tend to be 2%, am I thinking correctly that over time, tuition on a, as a percentage of the garrison budget will actually get smaller as compared to your total budget because it will likely be 2%, but your budget will be going up at two and a half to three. And adjust the chain CPI, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair, fair, that's a fair point to make. Okay. and certainly one that we could discuss. That would be something I'd want to consider yep. about... Um, like, how do we share the... the, the yeah, I'm not benefits. aware how we came to 2%, um, but that's certainly a good point. 
Yeah, I think it's just a two percent is a number that seems to be used quite extensively in, a, <laughs> in New York State, right? It's shorthand for right. Um, so, and again, the the basis of the contract development uh, last year for this year was consistency, and right. obviously, there's a variability that comes on, comes in with CPI. Yeah, and two uh, percent uh, establishes a consistent rate increase each year as a an acknowledgement that costs are increasing. Uh, granted, some costs are increasing at a higher rate than that. I think our average tax cap was in the even below two percent range mm -hmm. over the last ten years. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think they are. I don't think I. Yeah, I think that would make sense to me. Um, I got two numbers, if I can go. Uh, you may have this. These are you. You may not. Um, what is Garris? So, uh, Dr. Benante was you know put up effectively Haldane's number uh, on a uh, cost per pupil. Uh, what is Garrison's it's cost higher. per pupil? It's that, higher. That particular study, I know that it's higher than Haldane. I don't, I, between an NRT rate and that, that particular <clears throat> formula, like, I know it's, it's, it's higher, significantly higher. So your, your Garrison number is higher than Haldane's number, yes. not just an NRT rate. Yes. And then you're asking for a significant uh, That's correct. discount. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, second number, you have, so currently we, right, which is great, we have 53 mm -hmm. students uh, from Garrison. Which I actually thought that number was higher, so I apologize. <laughs> I think the freshman year, we, it may be a bit yeah. higher, so it might actually be There are a number of students from Manitou, I think, that came as well. So okay, well, let's sit with sure. 60. Um, what percentage of that is... Uh, the overall students of Garrison right now it's that about are at that age group. Haldane, and one third O'Neill. Okay. But that changes on a yearly basis. I mean, the legacy of having the two schools is that you have families. Like, I, I, my guess is that maybe this year's class will be a little more heavily toward O'Neill, knowing some of the families who have siblings at O'Neill and those type of things. Mm -hmm. But it's generally about two thirds, one third. Ken, do you happen to know what's the current size of the eighth grade cohort at Garrison? I think it's 27 or 28. And I think it was right around 30 or 31 last year, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And we had approximately 18 students. I think we showed 16 here, but the yeah. Manitou piece, I think we that we may have missed that. And that it, we showed 16 here, but it's actually 18 students attended um, from, from Haldane. But as you noted, and perhaps reflected in previous slides, the number really has varied in, in previous years. There was a year, I think it was as low as nine, we showed there. Um, the last year was one of the higher. Yeah, uh, the population varies too. It does. Right? Yep. Cohorts switch, yep. you know? So that's why I'm just asking for percentages. Got it. But as I noted, we are, our cohorts are large in middle school right now. Um, they're all in the high 20s. And so this is much higher than it has been in the past. Sure, showing up on the modified boys soccer team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, there's, there's my numbers. That's it. Well, and, you know, to that overall cost per student number, um, that's, there's another number, right, with the special education student? Isn't that a separate number? So in last year's uh, negotiation, we agreed to establish the special education costs as the same uh, as uh, the general education costs. Um, for students who are attending Haldane. If a student's placed in an out-of-district program, uh, Garrison assumes the uh, cost for their placement in that program. But I mean, overall, the Haldane's overall cost per student, which you just had up there, 26000 right. isn't it a Isn't it a different price for special education? Generally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Maggie. I, and I, um, that is not listed in the same uh, ESSA financial transparency report. So... I didn't have uh, a cost to present this evening as it related to that, but we can uh, certainly assume our cost per student for special education is higher. And, and again, there's some right differences differences in those numbers when we talk about this the, the number, the $26,000 mm -hmm. overall cost per student, um, and then the NRT rate. Right. And it's, it's generally a little bit lower. But you know, can you just sort of, for the benefit of Haldane School District taxpayers, you know, how do you explain that this is what it costs, this is our average cost to educate Haldane students, that, you know, we're asking, Gar or Garrison's asking us to pay? Sure, I, I, I won't. Um, it's an agreed upon rate that the boards agreed to for at least 
since 2012. Uh, I, I, it likely goes on much longer than that. Um, you know, my documents in my office go back as far as 2012 as it relates to it. I think there's been years where it's trended closer to the NRT rate. And uh, we're at a point for a variety of factors that it isn't uh, trending as closely. I'll say this, though, uh, just some other math. If you were to look at what Garrison was paying in 2016-17, it was about 80% of the NRT costs. And if you were to look at what Garrison's paying this year, it's about 80% of the NRT costs. So I won't say that's been the very, it, it, the, the contract is not structured on a percentage of NRT rate, obviously. Um, it just so happens that um, I was you know, looking at it a little differently uh, in preparation for today, and it seems that Generally, uh, Garrison this year is paying the same percentage or a uh, rate that uh, they've paid in years past. But the rate varies from year to year. So you can see where, well, one year it might be 85 and another year it might be 75. Um, but and it's really, it's a reflection of spending. Mm -hmm. um, your NRT rate is going to go up because you guys have you've received more state aid last year and you spent more money right. this year. So you, there's no doubt that that number will go right. up. And that's something that as far as a Garrison resident, we don't obviously have any say over that. So. Right. It's that's that's partially why, you know, we receive a decrease in state funding. We're spending less. Right. We're, we're doing our best, but right. it, it, we have no control over that. I think the agreement symbolize. And again, I don't have the history of, you know, each board of education and each administration across two districts, no less. The agreement, though, does signify that at some point there was an understanding between the two districts that a separate arrangement from the NRT rate was going to be established. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it just would be the NRT rate, <laughs> right? So, and again, I don't know the stories behind that. I don't know, you know, at what point we came to do so, but at least for the last, uh, again, dozen years, um, you know, there there's some agreement between the districts that this is a unique relationship and we're establishing, there's an exchange of service uh, in this regard. And it necessitates something different than what the state formula establishes. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair. And, you know, <clears throat> listening to, to Kent a little bit earlier talking about, you know, unpredictables and we don't know, you don't know your future fixed costs. I mean, we don't know our future fixed costs either. And, I mean, just to play that, you know, that one, that percentage of the population that's going to that's gonna ask about this, you know, um, I, it, just, it just seems so difficult. I, I think there's room for discussion on a per year basis and, and see what comes up and what, you know, for, for the next school year. But I think to enter into any type of, you know, any type of fixed contract would be pretty irresponsible for, for, our, for the housing district taxpayers just because we don't know what's coming down the pike. We could have this huge capital project that might, may or may not be coming to fruition. So, you know, I just wanted to, it's a catch 22. You know, I see you on the side of the, the now it's going to be the basketball court. You know, it's hard, but it's now, I, and I the understand. Field and the baseball field. But, you know, it, it's it's hard. It's a, it's a thing that transcends our history, your history, my history at time period with the school district, for sure. Um, but, you know, it's different property taxes assessed differently and different things, you know, where it, I, I pay double in some cases, for my postage stamp size yard, you know, then you guys down. And, and I know there's that argument that's just, that festers, and it's gonna be really hard to, you know, and it's got value. That argument has a, has a lot of value for, for certain taxpayers. So anyway, I just wanted to. No, no I, I appreciate it, like I said, and I understand that. Um, it's not something we can change. I will point out, I do believe the cost per educating each student is not the same for garrison students. There's no transportation involved. And the incremental cost for adding whatever population we have certainly does not cost each one of those students. If we, if we extracted our students from this, your cost would go up significantly or you'd have to make cuts. And that's, nobody wants that. As a Phillips Sound resident, I don't want that. But we're really pushed financially against the wall a little bit. And the unpredictability makes it very, very difficult for us, especially given the challenges we faced last year and we will certainly face this year. Ken, a question. Um, and this came up, in, in all fairness, in our discussion with the board. If... Uh, or with representatives from the board uh, a couple of weeks ago. It, the value of the relationship, relationship is something I, I, I heard uh, you state and I know is important to us as well. And you also, though, alluded to potentially exploring other options to expand choice. And 
Why is that necessary? We were dedicated to offering high school choice. And because we don't control what decision you all will make as far as what tuition you'll offer us, if we can't afford it, we have to go out, we'll have to look elsewhere to do that. I heard a causal relationship in there that I'm going to, that I'm going to push on. So it's a if, then. That's uh, something we're discussing at our meeting tomorrow night, which you're all welcome to attend. I'm sure <laughs> you have nothing better to do. Uh, it is something that will be on our agenda tomorrow night. Okay. So here, I'll, I'll throw out two points that you can not answer on behalf of the board because <laughs> you probably not, I wouldn't want you to. But if um, we were able to enter into a relationship that guaranteed tuition stability and there were a structure to guarantee us revenue stability while maintaining school choice, would that be acceptable to you? I, I certainly think that would be something that we would or at least very much like to discuss okay. and explore. Second question, if we were able to enter into a relationship that provides what we mutually provide, would you take off the table any time during that term of that contract, your ability to add incremental high school choice during that term? I mean, it's certainly a point. That, like you said, I won't be able to answer on behalf of the yep. board right now, but okay. I, I take your point and I will take that back to, our, yeah, to my colleagues. And I had a, um, it was my understanding, I believe that our current agreement for four years, there is room for it to be extended one additional year to five but we can only enter into agreements that are for Our, our attorney years. was looking into how that could be modified. So in order to extend, I don't know if you know, this is something I learned last year, in order to create a more than two-year agreement, our district, we have to put it in front of our voters. Our right. voters did approve a five-year deal with you right. last year. So she was, our, our attorney was looking into whether if we came to an agreement, we could simply modify those terms and not have to go back in front of the voters or not. So I don't know the answer to that. You don't know the answer. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I'm actually going to, so everything that folks on this board have said about what we understandably perceive to be the concerns that our housing taxpaying constituents have, I agree with, I agree with all of those, but I would like to shift the conversation just a little bit. And I wish I thought to give you a chance to think about this in advance. But so I just did some quick math, and I'm remembering from last year. So like 56 students times $16,450 is, is over $900,000. It's close to a million dollars. I remember that from last year. So that, while I don't, that pr purchases program for yes. our high school and I don't know exactly, I mean, I just think this is an important piece for us to consider in all of it. Um, that's, and I would assume that if we were to end our agreement with Garrison and that amount of money decreased over a number of years, that, am, am I correct in thinking that that's a burden that the high school would primarily I mean, I know we'd have to think about that. I mean, because this is how, let me just tell you how I've been thinking about it since we talked to Garrison. I was like, well, that's like a meaningful amount of money. That's got to buy three or four people. You know, that's got to pay the salaries of three or four sure. people when you think about benefits and, you know, everything like that. And I was like, well, what, what impact, you know, what impact would that have on our high school program? And it seemed to me like it could be a potentially big impact on our high school program. And I just think that's something that we should, I would like to have a better understanding about. And maybe it's something, maybe it's too much looking into the future and we can't know. But I don't think it's insignificant to point out that's a meaningful amount of money and it represents people and it represents high school program. And I just think that's something that we need to keep in mind. I would that a hair, Phil. Oh, that would be could. great. Yeah. So your terminology. So if we take Kent at, at at, at what he stated, and the guy sends his kids here too. Um, that's not really, remember, that's not just like Haldane Cold Spring high school students, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's our high school students. Uh -huh. So the issue that I have in the frame of the conversation, and John has pointed it out, 
where you say we're you know we meaning Cold Spring Haldane is going to lose a million dollars. Well, I look at it and I say, well, actually, you know, Kent's daughter uh, is at a million dollars, right? Be- off of an experience at Haldane. Um, and so when John says, hey, I feel like you're, there's a little bit of a cudgel here where you're mm-hmm. saying, you know, we're going to walk away and we want this choice and there's no guarantee back to us. I find it, you know, it's a little bit problematic, right? Because we see the million dollars and, I, and the way I see it is, I, these are our kids, mm-hmm. right? We're all in this together. And the concept of saying, well, if you don't meet these certain criteria, then we're going to pull that money out. That's a little problematic, right? So don't answer that question, Kent. Just recognize, because <laughs> you don't want to answer for the board, but my, my you, only you, point you've got to that. realize that, right? And putting that in a position is, We've, is difficult. We're in a position where we're, we are being offered by other high schools that rate. So, yeah, but your daughter goes here. I, 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 and, and I, if, like and I said, means, there's nobody in this, this room means, that wants this I, exactly. to continue more than me. And if this means, you know, this is our school. These are our children. Right? And then the idea to then say, well... Our kids could jump to, you know, X, Y, and Z. It's, it's, it it's, seems a little... It's, 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 it's more of a question of protecting ourselves. We, we, we can't afford an NRT rate. We simply cannot afford it. So we're coming to you and saying, we are able to get a rate that we can afford. We, we're asking that you match the rate because we're longtime partners. If you can't match it, I'm not sure our budget process will allow us to continue our relationship. It's, it's really comes down to the, that more than anything else. And it, it's heartbreaking to me. It's gut-wrenching to me. Right. But we don't have levers to create extra money to pay called in more than our other high school partners. Ken, if I just go back to the conversation we had with the leadership at, of Garrison, it's not so much uh, Garrison's drivers in this aren't also just thinking about their high school students as trying to maintain a certain level of programming for your K yeah. through eight students. It's got to come um, out of there. That, we don't have right. any other so way the, to the, the 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 impact. Uh, you're not only thinking of the impact, and we heard this from. Uh, their leadership, not only of the students who attend here or who could potentially attend here, it's the impact on their K-8 group as well. And Ken spoke to some of the uh, discussions uh, or some of the impact that even going through last year's budget development process had on uh, losing less senior staff who you know are concerned about stability and such and uh, reducing programs. So uh, I think that's a factor in their budget discussion that is... Um, we have uh, yeah. very few levers to pull. Right. to create extra revenue. So that, that is truly the impetus for all of this is a budgeting exercise. It is mm-hmm. no more than that. I, nobody in the room wants this to continue more than me. Um, so this is, that said, we, we couldn't go out for a vote to pay for extra money to send your way because that would never pass. Mm. What? Just, I mean... We have our, our, our community, I think, to, in looking at our voter roll, our school community is extremely small. And those that are extremely active are the K through eight parents. Half of the, or a third of those parents, they go to a different high school. Mm-hmm. It's not a very large voting block. It might be enthusiastic, but it's not large enough to send a two thirds victory on an override. Um, and like I said, last year is, and I, I hope you all never have to go through that experience. It was very, very painful for our community. And uh, so we're, we're focused on figuring out a way to make it work. Um, and, and we'll continue to do that. Financially, to circle back, uh, it's nine hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot of money, um, and it would have a direct impact on not only our high school students. I, I think on uh, depending on how you resolve a potential gap like that, you're resolving where there may be opportunity to realize reduced costs. So that's not just on our high school. Right. Um, uh, I also think that uh, when we look at our high school, one of the advantages of our high school is the nature of its size. It's a small high school. Uh, we have extensive offerings relative to our size. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking Right, about. that could potentially be impacted. It's 54 or so <laughs> students that go to or attend our high school um, out of 300. Mm-hmm. So it's a sixth 
uh, or so. It's about 16 to 17% of our high school population. Uh, I think when, we, when it comes to, we talk about this sometimes with our small class sizes, there is a time that even if we're able to maintain those instructional programs, uh, which I know we would make every effort to do so, I sometimes worry you want there to be a substantive class for the activities and the discussions that's occurring at a classroom level. Um, and not just that our garrison students in any way are just you know, filling seats and whatnot, but it, it, you know, losing 50 plus students from our high school would, uh, I think, have a direct impact on putting reductions aside on the nature of what's occurring in our classroom environments on a day-to-day -day basis. And while I appreciate the point that Ezra was making about like there are kids, definitely, yeah. I'll be honest, in, in thinking about that, I'm actually thinking about the kids that are at Haldane right now, K through eight, and the impact. I just, I, I think it's important for us to also be mindful that losing a million dollars over the course of four years, which is what would happen if we didn't, ha if we didn't have an agreement. And I'm not saying I'm like pro agreement. I just think it should be, they're not there, that losing a, a million dollars over the course of four years will have some kind of programmatic, I, I think it's safe to say we'll have some kind of programmatic impact on the high school experience of the children that are at Haldane K through eight right now. And I'll be, I mean, I've thought about this a lot. Wait, the K through eight students? Yeah, the K, because they'll be going to Haldane in, in a few mm -hmm. years. So to be specific, like every K through eight kid, Haldane kid right now is who's gonna go to Haldane mm -hmm. High School. Mm -hmm. They will go to a high school that has a million dollars left, I mean, this is all well, yeah I mean a million dollars we don't know that's what it, that's what it's going to be but about however many years. it's something mm -hmm. you know and I, I think every year and, you know and they're not able to give us right. the exact amount of kids every year so right I you know I'm not I I I am fair I am not advocating anything right now I'll be honest I've thought about this a lot in the past couple of years my child benefited enormously from having like lots and lots of AP math and science classes. And he took AP physics too. There were six kids in that class. That was the best class for Peter ever. I mean, that was the class, that was the class, you know, that, those, those, you know, and I'm not saying, we don't know what the impact would be. We don't know what classes would get cut. We don't know what kinds of staff, we, we don't know what would happen, but I think it's safe to say that something would happen to our program. And I just want to speak that. Yeah, a million dollars is roughly three percent of our budget. Of our budget? Uh, yeah, a little north of three. Right, it's three percent. Mm -hmm. So think about not passing a budget. Right, that's exactly right. right. Yeah. That year, you know, a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. So you talking about that? I mean, it's crazy for me to say this because I think in the conversation with people, I've been one of the people who's been as vocal as anybody else, sort of not being excited about the position that, that we're in with this, you know, with, with, yeah. with this situation. So, I mean, you know, I'm not, I really want to be clear, I'm not advocating for anything. I just think it's important sure. for us to, that's it. Well, I, um, I, I was very moved, I think, by what Ezra is saying about our kids. And I, I feel like <clears throat> one of the things I think we all are taking for granted, or as a given here, is that you know every Garrison student that's here is in, is a Haldane student, and we care about them deeply. And that um, there are a few opportunities that we, as a board, get to talk about that relationship in a meaningful way, and that we are focused on the finances right now is out of necessity. And um, I appreciate everybody's candor and the questions everyone's asked about it. I will say, as a person, you know, I, I feel a responsibility to those community members who don't have students in the district, but as a parent of a child in the district, speaking solely on that, I feel like, um, you know, we benefit immensely from the relationship overall outside, you know, programmatically, but also what every student brings into those programs. So the ability that we have to provide it is as meaningful as who gets to participate in that program in one way or another. And, uh, you know, we value them both in the classroom and as extracurricular wise as well. Um, and also echo what Peggy said is that I think the most that I heard during the conversation that before it became public last year from other parents was about how their child was looking forward to having the students come from Garrison into the ninth grade and what that meant 
to the transformation of the culture as a result of that. And I think that's a benefit that we should absolutely highlight in the conversation as much as we should be about our, our fiscal responsibility. Um, I just feel like it's important for us to say that as we talk about the fine, you know, the finer points of um, what we owe each other. Um, I, I also wanted to thank Phil for scaling what the, the change that has occurred over the past four or five years in the tuition and that it is in fact going up. We don't at least see it being stagnant. And there was a moment there before COVID happened when we were sort of cheerily and merrily going hand in hand towards something that felt closer to NRT and you know, we can't go back in time. That was. Before I, before I became an authority, that was one of the things you were talking about is raising that NRT, right. NRT rate. And it's a sort of inherent, it, it's an inherited kind of conversation that's gone on for multi-generations, you know, before many of us have. So um, uh, I just, I would like to put that into the room since um, something that hasn't been stated yeah, openly. Uh, just to come back to that last point, and that was something that between Garrison and, and Haldane, between me and Mr. Albano, when we first discussed transitioning the rate, was uh, an easy conversation um, until such time when the constructs of the finances of the district, you know, yeah. didn't allow for it. Um, and it's understood that happens. Um, you know, the uh, state aid did not and come it, to every district in the same way. And uh, um, so I think it, it's reflective that at that point in time, Garrison was understanding that the rate did not reflect, uh, um, you know, the cost. Um, whatever the real cost is, if we can arrive at that, and, um, and, and an understanding of a move in that direction until such time it became, as we hear it, uh, no longer, they're no longer able to afford it without significantly impacting uh, the other programs that they have at the school. I'm just, I'm just going to throw something out just for the, the anybody who's watching. And because we've mentioned state aid and, the, and the, uh, the, our, our benefit and the, the, the change, negative change that Garrison, the reason why state aid changes is because of wealth ratio of the community. Correct. And the reason why garrisons went down is not because the state doesn't like you any less or likes us more. Right. It's because you live in a wealthier district. And so I think some of, to echo some of the things that Maggie has brought up, is like there is this feeling that has existed, I think, probably for longer than mm. I've lived here. Probably before kids came from yeah. the Probably Paris before any kids, right? That there's a, a relative wealth disparity between the two communities, and the reverse is true on the taxation. So that is a that is an in sort of a facts on the ground or perceptions on the ground that we need to be able to understand and mm -hmm. speak to and speak mm -hmm. to. But also, John, we're not a state money wealthy. No, school. no neither I mean, compared to. So the yeah. fact that you know right. we're we're talking. Oh yeah, well we didn't you know get cuts it's not like we have a large percentage of our budget right. is provided by the state no. either because not for nothing we're also we're also a wealthy absolutely. district absolutely. um less so <laughs> but still you know it's privilege versus privilege at some level so um but let's also get that out there that you know yes your loss to to state funding is is very hurtful in your district but we don't have particularly a large source of state money, no. No. right? And so at, at, at some level, that's a point for you, you know, to also be able to keep in mind that it's not, you know, the vast majority of this budget is paid for by our local taxpayers who have been paying increased tax taxes for decades in comparison Point to Garrison, right? And so, so, so it's an ask, right? And they sent the right guy to ask it, believe me, man. But it's, it, it's a significant ask. And then to go back and then suggest that Putnam Valley or other school districts uh, that, well, you know, let's, let's have their taxpayers uh, cover this cost at a lower rate. That's also an interesting question. How, you know, how long does that take to, to fester at that point? And then would you have the same conversations that you have with us, which is this is a great, meaningful relationship, but then all of a sudden would you have that same conversation somewhere else? Well, this is a great, meaningful relationship, and then this is a great, meaningful relationship. And I don't mean to 
be negative about it, but there is a lot of discussion on this board about maintaining garrison students here. And I know that that's reciprocated at some level, but you need to understand that there is a huge conversation of, you know, these are our students, right? And when at some level, the comeback is, yeah, they're your students, kind of, but they could be, I mean, they could be somewhere else, too. That's like, wow, we're spending a lot, feels like we're put, putting a lot of emotional and financial energy into having these be our students, right? So just be, be very, very mindful I'm, of that. Yeah. I appreciate that, and some perspective. again, I have a daughter here, so. I know, I know, you're the, you're I the guy. A, I'm a, you're the uh, I'm a, <laughs> I'm you not a, I'm not an unbiased uh, party, but I, we're, I would say the act of what we're doing is just trying to protect ourselves in some way. Like if we, we can't afford to pay you, we need to figure out how we still offer school choice to our kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So other high schools have come and been very enthusiastic about the idea of adding our students. I do believe, like I said in, the, in my statement, that the incremental cost of each student is not the NRT rate. It adds, I think what Sean and Peggy said is true. You're able to offer a different, a much more robust program with the addition of our students. So I would just urge you to take all of that into consideration. And I very much, Ezra, appreciate your, your thoughts and feelings on that, and I share them. Great. All right. Again, thank you yeah, so you. much. Really, I'm just really glad I, I get to go home and don't have to stay the rest of the meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own meeting. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. And by the way, thank you for being on the board. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. It's, it is School Board Appreciation Week. I don't know if you were aware of that. <laughs> Where was my email? Where's my cookies? Where's my Where's my t-shirt? Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right, so um, just so everyone knows, Dr. Bernante didn't decide that that was the end and he's just leaving the district. He's just going to do the kind thing and, and walk our guest out. So, But um, he's assured me that we can move on, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, next up is our communication from the public. Um, since we have no public here, I'm going to spare everybody uh, reading the long paragraph here. Um, moving into information reports. Uh, there's no yeah. I don't. I got it. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. <clears throat> it is. Yeah. Uh, moving into information reports. These are here for your review for our next meeting. And now going into consent agenda minutes. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. 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 Uh, any discussion? No? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Great. All right. Moving into consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Um, I think you skipped okay. financial. How does that keep happening? <laughs> uh, consent agenda financial. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No? Now, moving on to consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No? Um, I'm sure Dr. Benante might have something he'd like to say here. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are on to uh, consent agenda personnel. Is there anything that you would like to say? Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything. Mm -hmm. No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Oh, I didn't say aye, but I, 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 I said aye. aye. Throw them out. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. thinking. Right. I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Pause for the vice president's thoughts. And moving on to unfinished business. First on here is our board, board of education goals, which are attached. Ms. Shields. 
Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby adopts the Board of Education goals for the 2022-2023 school year as presented. Great. Motion, please. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? We've been working on these for a while now. I don't know mm -hmm. if everyone had a chance to review them. Yes. yes. Um, <clears throat> so our, the second goal is support the district's identification of areas of focus from the school climate survey, et cetera. Um, when, when is, what is the next step? What is the timing on hearing? Like we, we got the email in our inbox, right, mm -hmm. with the results. Sure. So what's so sort of the? You'll begin to, I'm sure, dig into those <laughs> and see that the feedback is pretty extensive. And the one piece, uh, an additional piece that's not included there are all the comments that were provided, which provide an additional layer depth of information to the district. So uh, we will, we're working with this and have identified uh, a few areas of focus, which we will share with the board. Um, and that's through uh, two levels, district and then also building. So uh, the district areas of focus are something we're beginning to coalesce around. So I would envision at some point in the near future, I'll share those with the board and what some potential strategies are for us to um, improve in those areas. And then the board will, I'm sure, have thoughts around how to support level? us. The building level is, so, I, the district, so you said there's two areas of focus, district and building, so what's the building? So the building principals are working with their building level data with a team of teachers or staff members in their building to further identify their goals and the specific strategies for improvement in those areas. And we'll hear back from them on that as well. Correct. Okay, thank you. Great. Any other questions? Hmm. My only question was can we take the word sufficiently out of gold uh, out of gold one <laughs> so it says right now it reads support a district campus master planning process that sufficiently aligns a district's vision and mission with its use sure. of space can we just oh. align yeah, <laughs> the district's good. vision and mission you don't want qualifiers in there? i don't like qualifiers yeah. and the, uh, that <laughs> specifically exactly just take it out yeah, yeah and, sure the, and the only other thing just as a point of clarification on three, when it says develop and agree, and I apologize for not getting these. I thought about these earlier, but I didn't email them to you. Develop and agree on legislative advocacy priorities for the board. I think it's useful to be explicit that these are board legislative advocacy priorities and not district or administration. Great. Are there, uh, if we approve these this evening, can we can go in and amend that language without any thought? Without amendment. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just Great. make that notation. All right. Great. Well, all those in. Yeah, oh, go ahead, Peggy. I just, the only thing is, I just think we'll want to, thanks very much. Yeah. Um, I think for that one in particular, for that about does, does developing and agreeing on legislative advocacy priorities, I mean, as well as monitoring the implementation of the newly funded enhanced instructional experiences, I just, I want to figure out like what our process for doing those things are going to be. Because they're all things that need to happen in, I mean, like everything, pretty much almost everything we do, an open meeting. And so I just don't, you know, I think, I mean, they do, you know, we, I think for us to meet our goals, we just want to be mindful about when, when those things will happen. Because to some extent, I feel like one and two, which are really sort of aligned with the district goals, we're supporting, and, and Dr. Benante and the staff sort of take the lead on sort of doing that work and we're supporting figuring out the best way to support but the other two i feel like are are like we're the actors in a way and and maybe i just want to i'm just making it i don't know how to i don't know how to do either one of those things i guess is maybe one of the in things our, i'm in saying our, I, I recall I, I believe it was when we were discussing these uh -huh. with phil perhaps in our agenda prep meeting we were talking about as far as for instance legislative priorities are concerned the possibility of setting up a a separate committee that oh, that's right. in God, one way or another <laughs> to help us define <laughs> locally yeah. and at the state level what priorities, if any, we might yeah, have. Right. So there's a okay. you know a genuine and generous right. conversation happening at that level in one way or another. No, thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot and that. I was just gonna say as a suggestion, not certainly the only way to do this, but you could for the monitor the implementation of newly funded enhanced instructional experiences as part of the budget development process, it would be a natural segue to say, okay, as we begin to think about what we're gonna do next year, let us give you a recap of the things we have funded in the past 
whatever key initiatives we signed over the last couple of years and give you a status on how the funding decisions that you have made previously have led to what we see now, mm -hmm. right? Because so that could be a, potentially a kickoff to this year's budgeting process. Right. Not saying that we have time, space, or whatever, but that logically flows. So is this, will this largely be then a secondary process conversation, or do you think it requires some sort of edit or to no. be amended? No? no, no, no. I was just, before we adopted the goals, I wanted to make sure I understood that right. we had a plan for, that, that we had a plan for, for fulfilling them or at least acknowledging that, um, right. that we want to figure out, I guess what I'm saying, in adopting these goals, and I don't know if we've done this in the past, I would appreciate if periodically we would maybe add, even add to the agenda, sort of checking in with each other about the extent to which yeah, we are meeting these, because sense. these, you know, discussion about what our goals should be and discussion about the extent to which we're um, meeting our goals are all activities that need to take place in open meetings, and Correct. I want to make sure that we have a plan to include that on the agenda moving forward. Great, thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. No, okay, just okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to reflections on our board retreat. Uh, we met in the second half of our annual board retreat at uh, Winter Hill and Garrison. I think among the other... Oh, wait, no, I think district goals. District goals. Oh my goodness, we got so buried in the board goals <laughs> that I completely forgot we have district goals as well. Yeah, I don't to talk about them a bit. I think I it's know. fine for us to have a conversation about them. Side well said. <laughs> Ms. Shields. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby adopts the district goals for the 2022-2023 school year as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Okay. Second. <laughs> Let's discuss. <laughs> I'd similarly pull out the sufficiently, but other yeah. than that. Yeah, I'd, that's I'd, where I'd, it was borrowed from, so that's great. <laughs> I figured as much. <laughs> Any other discussion points? No? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Great. Now we'll have our reflections on the board retreat. Um, as, as I was saying, among the other topics, we focused on uh, largely board communication. I don't know, I think it was time well spent. Um, I think one outstanding question for us to continue to think about, we can talk about it now, is our, when we had a desire to, I think, address how comments and questions brought up during our two dedicated public comment sessions might be addressed in public meeting thereafter and whether or not we want to build that into the agenda, for instance, uh, the second agenda, you know, the next day or the next meeting, or um, we want to communicate out on the website any, you know, public comments on anything brought up in public in, in a public conversation. I don't know if it's something for us to necessarily resolve this evening, but I think it's a question for consideration. Um, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does anybody else have any other sort of thoughts from our retreat? I mean, I, I, th I thought it was, I thought the opportunity, uh, you know, just some of the exercises that we did gave us a chance to sort of, you know, talk and get to know each other and, yeah. you know, in, in a setting that we don't usually, you know, we have. And, you know, being at Winter Hill is very pretty. It's very, who, how often, yeah. that's the only time I ever get to go there. It's very, it's nice to... <laughs> together with people there. I hate team building exercises. So <laughs> I, I felt like the first retreat, I mean, I, you know. We're doing whatever. trust falls next time. I, trust are you going to you fall off the table? We didn't have to do like no. build the gumdrop <laughs> thing we had to do a few stuff, years ago. But, we you know, didn't do any trust falls, falls, just saying. So. <laughs> no, but, um, but I did find that we, you know, we did an exercise where we took um, scenarios as a board member, somebody in the community, you know, all these different scenarios, like how do you deal with that? How do you get back to the public? How do you report to the school? And I found that actually really useful just to yeah. hear everybody's opinion on that because it, sometimes it feels like, sometimes I feel like I'm operating in a vacuum in this <laughs> role that I, that I am on the school board um, and that sort of helped just to hear everybody's candid thoughts yeah. on those different scenarios. That was, so. that was, I agree that that was useful. super useful. Yeah. It's interesting to understand what type of communication, just for the public. We did a, what type of communicator are you, kind of, oh, which is I... interesting, right? And you sort of learn what, how other people ingest and 
think about information. But I thought that was very useful because it puts you in specifically gray situations where you're like, okay, I, should I be responding as a board member? Who among the administration should I notify about this issue, if at all? And I thought that was great. I thought that was really useful. Oh, wait, you took a breath. I was going to say, I do think we should come back to, perhaps not at this meeting, but I did appreciate the thought that went into how do we make public, right. um, consider the, if I remember correctly, it was, um, if there is a response that comes after some time, after some thought, because often um, someone will come to the board with a question or a concern that we may not either have, be able to address consistently as a board in, in the moment or have the information to be able to address, but that an answer is eventually supplied to that person. They have asked it in public session. The answer comes to privately. Correct. So how do we as a board and as a, a district make that answer more public so people who would gain the benefit of the, that knowledge? I thought that was a really good thing to think about. And the, I think the proposed solution of making it available as part of the agenda was a good suggested outcome. I don't know whether, I don't know what we need to do to, I, I don't think we should decide it now, <laughs> but I think that that is something we should bring back up perhaps like old business next time yeah, and sort of, all right, it, to understand from a legal perspective, is this amenable? Could we actually technologically implement it? All that kind of stuff. And maybe we have some perspective on that next time we can sort of discuss. Yeah. And I believe uh, his name escapes me. It's Tom, right? Tom is who facilitated. Oh, yeah, John. John. Oh, it rhymed. It was pretty close. Okay. It's good, right? Uh, John had had referenced maybe it was a Wappingers, Wappingers. and he said he was going to get back to us about how yes. they handle it on. So that might be another That's great. useful good. instrument for us to think great. about. Great. Now moving on to uh, the campus master plan update. I believe that Dr. Benante will. Megan's going to pull up some slides. Great. I just want to revisit this with the board. Uh, Tom, <laughs> Campus Master Plan, Tom. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Melissa will be back. Actually, Melissa will be taking next week's presentation. Tom was on campus today to meet with our Master Planning Committee. Uh, so next week, uh, they will be presenting some... Uh, some new ideas or iterations of some of the from the discussion that they had with the board uh, last uh, last time. I think that uh, so a question I've heard. Uh, well, let me scrap that. The, the CS Arch desires, and we engage them to create an aspirational vis vision for our campus design, uh, considering our current needs, uh, our projected needs. And then also our vision for student learning um, on campus. And they're trying to highlight in this iteration uh, that they shared with you and the iteration they're going to share with you next week, the key areas that they feel uh, require additional building on campus in order to address either those needs or those visionary aspects of our uh, program for kids. As it relates to the current discussion, some of the centers around the high school and as you're well aware and the community is aware, the community made an investment in building that high school 18 years ago. And some of the thoughts that we're discussing now or the issues we're discussing now were similar issues that were discussed 18 years ago. And for a variety of factors, some of which I'm still learning more about, the, uh, there were decisions to take off the table uh, some components that we're now discussing putting back in to the plan. And I would say from an aspirational perspective, I don't think that's an issue. Um, uh, the issue may come when it comes time to decide what to put before the community for a potential vote. Um, but I just wanted to, to, to state that before we, we got into discussion tonight. I, I, one other piece is uh, I've had some records from board meetings from around that time shared with me. Uh, they're in digital format. They're actually in podcast form. So as you can imagine, it's a bit of a lift to, uh, to kind of get at the, the depth of discussion that was occurring at the board at the time. The great news is there's a record, there's actually a recording of conversation that was occurring, but pinpointing at which meeting and at what point in the meeting uh, takes a bit of time. 
Uh, this is my invite that if anybody's looking for some podcasts to listen to on the way to work or their commute, uh, I have a few podcasts to share and recommendations to make. No. Just Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> no, 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 no. Two X. Yes, right, right. Um, but that's going to take a little bit of time to really uh, accurately reflect what discussions were occurring as it related to the high school at that point and any particular points of relevance that that may have to come into this conversation i, I do sit with and i'm saying this candidly just for discussion i don't know how much it should matter for the aspirational reflection mm -hmm. of this part of a project i i'm just not sure I, I think it's always good to know our history and know the intricacies of that discussion but as it relates to this end of the project i'm not sure how much of that should get in the way of what we aspire different spaces on our campus to be. Um, but it, it is relevant. It will be relevant at some point along the way. Some things, uh, the, the building site locations, the potential building site locations are listed here. Just in further discussion with our leadership group, which Maggie and Sean are part of, um, as well as some internal folks, as well as some further conversation with CSR. There's some decisions or some direct further direction that I provided them, uh, just that I want you to be aware of for dis any discussion tonight, but also in, in preparation for them coming back next week. Site location three, uh, they have proposed as a potential area to uh, place an auditorium if we aspire to have an auditorium on campus. And just through discussion, I am sure that would be beautiful and a beautiful location to put an auditorium and a student commons. That being said, uh, that sits on, I think, a, a very unique part of our campus uh, that potentially could interfere with the view, uh, the view shed, if you will, from different locations. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the absence of seeing what an actual auditorium would look like from different perspectives on that site location, uh, you know, it, it creates concern for me. Uh, also, there's the potential for there to be a significant amount of bedrock underneath that area, which from a, a construction standpoint, a removal standpoint, could significantly drive up cost. And it just seems to, it, it seems that it need not be a factor in our long-term planning, whether it's sooner or later when it comes time to construct, when there's other site locations that are an option to put the one piece, uh, you know, an auditorium, uh, you know, on or near. Uh, so I asked them to eliminate that from consideration, um, and they're doing so in their planning. Additionally, uh, site location one, no, two, sorry, the playground area, uh, something we've asked them to be considerate of in any further iterations is the impact that a large building project would have on the neighborhood. Uh, that's an area of our property that butts up right against or backs up to residential areas. And it's just something I think should not be the first space that we consider um, unless it's absolutely necessary to. Uh, and then lastly, site location two. I'm sorry, that's the one I just spoke to. Site location one, uh, the Bell Lot. Um, is an area that just along the way has, uh, not for me, <laughs> but for others, has drawn a, a unique attachment to that area. Yeah, There's unique history that. there. The bell's there, even though we can move the bell, the rock, those can be moved. Uh, it just does seem to be drawing, uh, in the various groups that we meet with, a, a level of concern about potentially building there. Uh, so you'll see next week that CSR has tried their best to work with uh, current um, uh, areas four and five, which are direct extensions of the high school, uh, to address the programmatic areas that would require potential building sites um, that are most directly related to the high school, um, and also the auditorium being a K-12 community uh, space, uh, but also to include it in those areas of the school. We think that will help them, uh, will potentially help us move forward in the conversation we were having uh, in some ways uh, here, uh, and then also other groups that they're meeting with as well, help them move forward in discussion with those groups as well. And I'll use the term to arrive at consensus if we're going to build, where to build, uh, or if the planning, the plans are to include building sites, where those building sites should be on our campus for, for a few projects that were presented to you uh, last time. Uh, so I just wanted to mention uh, that as a, a precursor to next week's conversation. And then obviously uh, the board had a lot of 
uh, dialogue last meeting. We just wanted to use this yeah. as another touch point for further discussion among the board before CSR returns next week. Yeah. I participated today in the, the larger group meeting and um, I think we're in good shape in terms of the, the, the multiplicities of view that really was brought into the room. I think overall positive. Um, I think uh, central to our thinking moving forward outside of the obvious which is financing is just what the phasing is going to look like which i think is going to be important as we start to think about where to build how to build and when to build is you know how can we really be thoughtful about when that how how we can build upon you know project upon project upon project over time so um and that's yet to come that's my understanding and i think are, are we getting closer to really I guess committing to the process going into February as opposed to being done in December, or are we just going to continue to sort of work till we get to a completed project? I think project? because of this particular, uh, the last discussion with the board, and I asked them to, we're, we're not moving forward yet right. until you come and meet with the board again. I'll be prepared to make a recommendation at our next meeting as it relates to site locations and if they are to be included, if an auditorium, for example, is to be included in the project or in the, 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 the vision for this work, where it should go. <laughs> um, and uh, similarly with additional, the potential for additional classroom space, uh, we talked about the Mabel Merritt building and the viability of that long-term as classroom space, where those spaces should go. Um, so that would allow, if the board agrees, that then allows CSR to move forward with its process. But this little pause we've taken with this phase, just for further discussion, is, is likely to push their anticipated end date to at least January if not early February. If we now get into successive phases of planning and we have to pause just to spend a little bit more time, uh, then that could push that back further. But I think that's okay. Now's the time to do that. Um, you know, there's no rush you know, to finish by January. This doesn't have an implication on budget development for the upcoming school year. So I, I didn't think it would matter much. To the, I think the quality of the product and in, in particular the process and arriving as, as much consensus as we can is more important than meeting a deadline that of, of December great. at this point. Particularly if they have the capacity to do so, then we're not. I think, and I feel that. Yeah. Yeah, great. All right. Any other? No, it sounds like people are hearing feedback. It's definitely something being discussed in the community. I mean, that's why we want, why we're in the process. I really like that, you know, Dr. Benante took the opportunity to both allude to, you know, need that's been acknowledged for a while and aspiration and you know um, linking it to you know our educational objectives for kids I think this all makes a lot of sense yeah and I and and there's not a there's there's not a rush I mean this is this is figuring out what might make sense and what we might want to do and so there's 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 not a huge time pressure yeah and I would I would just Say for myself, I know that I needed to recenter myself on what the what this process that we're looking at on the screen actually is, which is for me, I got caught up in the oh my god we're deciding that we're going to do these things right now, which is not what the process is. The process is we may want to do a couple things in the future. Let us plan now so that. If in the future we want to do this thing, we don't have to reroute roads again, and we know where pedestrians are going to go, and it all works of a part. Totally makes sense. Um, so, regardless, and back to your, what are, are there phases? First is like, okay, we have the plan. Now it's like, okay, what are the plan would we want to do, or can we afford to do, or how are we going to do? That that's sort of makes sense. I will say, I'm sort of bummed about three. I'm sort of bummed about taking three off. <laughs> Yeah. Only because, and I'll tell you why. There's an aesthetic, right? I could see that being really interesting be really space. Cool. I also, <laughs> and I understand that there's probably a ton of bedrock under there, um, but I also think that the an auditorium is very much a shared space by the entire school, and I know that like the kindergartners use it, and that's and as do the high schoolers. So having it central to the like warmed the cockles of my heart. So I don't know. I, the, the, you can I'm sort still of do the that. auditorium there, buddy. Yeah, I know. It's exactly. actually that it's same spot. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't mess with the view shed. <laughs> Everybody can use it. Right. Exactly. We could be we could be very Roman. Yeah. 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 Y
Spe- speaking center. as somebody yeah. who spent months on the Nelsonville Zoning Board of Appeals addressing yeah. issues related to the potential cell phone tower and, and the issue of view sheds, I mean, it's 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 quite possibly a very smart decision for us to to have considered that because I think I think it's it's the kind of thing that that folks would have really noticed. It's the kind of thing here that people really value, you know, really value. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not unsurprised at all that people are having an emotional reaction to the bell lot. Like, when I saw that, I was like, well, I'm gonna be interested to hear what people have to say about that, you know? And part of me was thinking, well, like, yeah, I know, but kids that are gonna, val- you know, graduate there in the future, they weren't here 20 years ago, but like, for decades, people have, you know, have, have graduated there. People come to high school graduation every year who went to Haldane a long time ago. You know, it's it that that I mean, I have even been here that long. I mean, and that spot has I have some emotional ties to that spot for high school graduation. I'll be honest about it, you know. What can yeah, I say? It's not just that, it's a good overlook of the river. And it it's is. Just, it's another that, but there again, like these views, like if, yeah. you know, like it really the campus is so amazing because it is up on the hill and it does have these incredible views. And I think I think it was smart think, to think I ahead. I think you could do an auditorium at three where you're at grade <laughs> coming out of high school right, and yeah, the and, and the and you at grade coming in right it's a it's a yeah. scared. Right. Okay. I, want, I, want, I want you in the bucket what are you doing yeah okay, right. <laughs> no with a giant yeah. jackhammer for like months yeah. yeah all right all right moving on to uh new business uh our csc cpsc recommendations Ms. shields be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendation of the Committee on Preschool Special Education and Committee on Special Education as presented below. Great. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. All right, moving on to our second communication from the public. I don't believe we have anyone who, who's joined us Let's move on to board reflections. We've all been reflecting considerably. Here's our, yet another opportunity to reflect. I'll, I'll reflect on, on, on a couple of things. Um, and both involve the field. Right. Yeah. Question, the open, sort of a new business, a question, actually. Um, I was at the game where the student was injured, and it was horrible. Mm. Um, what I noticed was that it took a really long time for the ambulance to get down from, first they backed down, and we're all like, why are they backing down? And then they turned around and drove on the field, and we're like, well, they probably could have gone down straight. It made me wonder whether there isn't, I'm not, but that path on the sort of the upslope side where kids just walk down. Yeah, where the ambulance came down. Not where the ambulance came down, but the, the dirt, sort of the dirt oh, yes, yes. where people walk down to the field. Mm-hmm. Feels like the width of a car. And you end up at that little, pl- ter- I'm like, couldn't we just pave that so an ambulance to just go down there? I, but it felt like a really long time. There's probably a way to do it. But as a now, I think we've had two ambulances visiting just this year. Yeah. It makes me wonder whether it's a more efficient way to get yeah. medical attention down there. Is that, is that a question for Alteras, maybe? Uh, I think the, the site work yeah. potential is more of a question for Tim or okay. facilities, because okay. uh, that's an area where I know we have, to, it's, uh, has to do with the water runoff. I'm sure. Oh. Uh, so I don't know really what, if any work yeah. we can do, even that trail trail yeah. that goes down there. Um, and you know, just, point for concern, because it was, for everybody was there watching for like 20 minutes yeah, took, while the ambulance backed up, and there's a kid lying on the field right. who yeah. seemed to be fine, visually fine, yes. and everyone was calm, calm around him, but if it were a serious emergency. Yes. Or, or, the other thing related to that, I did talk, I was approached by a couple people um, in the community who are older and have less mobility, and they said, hey, during games, could we make a couple spots right here for handicapped? Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's a really good idea. I don't know whether we can actually do that by law, but being able to reserve a couple spots right at the top of that for people who are 
in walkers or have difficult oh, mobility. Yeah. I think I like, CSR is on that. Quite okay. frankly, they've brought up accessibility a yeah. number of times in their discussions, yeah. not only uh, in the buildings, this building in particular, yeah, sure. uh, but also uh, around the site. Yeah. So that's something that as we're meeting with them, I'll be sure to include. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, not an easy campus to navigate yeah. in, uh, for a variety of reasons. And um, uh, that whole issue, that whole area there, uh, right? You can see even for EMS coming in, right. uh, the way the parking lot's set up, it's difficult to get emergency vehicles right. in. And then if you were leaving, depending on how you came in, they yeah. were all still parked. Nobody can leave because right. uh, they're blocking everybody in, even though we wanted people to leave. <laughs> it'd, be it'd be interesting to see, us, like even for this weekend for homecoming, mm -hmm. you're going to have people who've been in the right. community for years who are in a walker. Yeah. Like, is there a way that we can set aside three Any parking spots system. right there at the top yeah. for yeah. somebody? Yeah. yeah, thanks. Anybody else have any reflections? I, I will say it was, uh, it was nice, I guess it was over last weekend, in the village of Nelsonville, we had a little potluck. Oh, yeah. And uh, Peggy was there and Ezra was there. And I just want to let everyone know that n the three of us were never alone in conversation at any time, creating a quorum. Um, I had one-on-one, -on -one, I had a one-on-one, -on -one, but it was uh, <laughs> lovely to meet your family and it was great to continually put a a human face on on everybody's here around the board yeah, so all us Nelson yeah, yeah. yeah and and i and i agree with you about i think one of the benefits of the of the retreat was getting to a place where you know i think ideally in public meeting we would all feel like our real selves and feel fully you know entitled to speak uh what's on our minds in an honest and truthful way so you know that you f that you felt like there's a vacuum where you are. I think is really telling that there's some work for us to do, uh, and how we sort of speak out collectively here around the table. So, yeah. All right, Dr. Benante. No comments. Yeah. Great. Then I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Great. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah, it's a long one.